Alright, so in this video I'm going to show you how to get started with Pasco Capstone, which is what we're going to be using on these laptops to collect data. And so you're going to find it in this corner right here. Okay, you can open it up. And we're going to be using this for our egg drop, so you're going to want to get this set up so that when it's your turn you're ready to go. <clears throat> and you can plug the sensor and get started. Doesn't really matter which you just want one with the graph, so there's these options here. You can just click this first one. Okay, there's no measurement options here yet. So we, you can wait. You could even, I guess, delete this one if you want. Click delete. And then you could move this guy over. And even use it to fill the screen. Okay, and then when it's your turn, you're going to come over <clears throat> and there'll be the, the force plate okay and you're going to set your egg drop device on the force plate so I'm going to demonstrate with my daughter's puppy right here and put on the force plate okay so while it's here there, you're going to kind of go over to the side here and there's a button that says tear and the reason we're going to use that is we need to zero the scale with <clears throat> your device on it so we count for its mass for when we do this calculation so you click the button to zero it out. Now what you'll do is you will plug in the sensor into the USB port on the side here. Okay. And then you'll click, you hear a little like beeping sound. Click select measurement, vertical force. And then down here we'll collect, it's got time right there. And so now we're ready to collect some data. We Down here we have the sample rate. We want to make this as big as possible, so a thousand hertz. And then when we're ready to drop, we'll bring get our device, pick it up. <clears throat> we're going to click record to start recording. Okay, so you see a big mess right there. And it dropped your device. Okay, so we dropped it on there. And you saw a big spike. And you can stop recording there. And so this the the way you move this around is similar to with the Chromebooks. It is a little bit easier to work with, so we're gonna kind of scale this down. Okay, we'll scale this over like this so we can get a better view of our our force chart here. And so what we can do, there's a couple of things we can do here. The first thing we're gonna want to do is select our area. So there's a pencil thing right there to select your area. And we want to get the whole thing. So probably right to about here maybe. And that's going to give us, so then we're going to click this right here to find impulse. So this is the impulse based on that graph. So it calculated the area for us. And then we'll just use this to kind of, the next step is going to be we want to find the maximum force. And so it says right here, if you move this, you click the little select coordinate tool and then click the add coordinates and it'll bring it out for you. And so as you move it around, it'll kind of auto select. So it looks like the maximum force we experienced here was 51 newtons. And the area, the impulse was 0.72 newtons. And I'm just gonna use this to verify that we zeroed it out okay. And so it's not perfect. You can see that when we, for some reason, when you zero it out, it's not great. Um, this also could be because the maybe the hat fell off. I don't know. Anyway, you can see that it's not quite at zero. It's a little bit less than zero. Um, but if you look here, so if that thing had a mass of like or a for a weight of two point two something, when we zeroed it out, it shifted it by about two newtons. Um, so it's not great. Well, I guess that is accounting for that missing hat because it's a negative force there. So you can see we did it with the hat on it and the hat bounced off. And so we lost some of the force there. So anyway, this should be the basics of finding the area, getting impulse, getting started. Uh, you're welcome to rewatch this as many times as you want. Um, because you're going to have to record this data pretty quickly and then disconnect your computer and just pop the cable off. And then you have this data to go ahead and analyze with your group. You can, when you're done, you can save it. 
and then once you save as I'd save it maybe to the desktop and then you can upload it to your Google Drive okay um, so anyway please let me know if you have any questions and this is how we're going to be collecting our data for the um, egg drop once you get your impulse you can then use that to find like change in momentum and find maybe the um, how fast it's going right before it hit, stuff like that. Okay, let me know if you have questions. So I'm also going to show you real quick from the perspective of the actual laptop. So you're going to look for Pasco Capstone. Okay, Pasco Capstone right here. And open that up. Okay. It's going to take a minute to open here. Um, and while we're waiting, we're going to, just going to remind you to make sure you put your device on the scale and zero it out. So we'll go ahead and select... Uh, really, any of these, you can do the table and the graph if you want. We just care about the table. You can even delete, or the graph, we could even delete the table there. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and expand the graph to fit the full screen. And so from here, when you're ready, you'll head over and you'll plug in the scale, or the, the force plate is what it's called. It's just a fancy scale. You heard the little beep. And then you'll click on hardware setup over here on the side, choose force platform. Actually, you don't need to do that. All you need to do is this. In here, you can click select measurement, force platform, and it's automatically going to set to time right there. You should have zeroed out the scale, and then you, when you're ready to collect data, you can go ahead and click, oh wait, I want to change this to 1,000 hertz, um, or 1 kilohertz, and then we'll click record. So now it's got just a bunch of noise there. And so this is where I zeroed it out. That's what it zeroed out at. And then I'm going to drop something on there. And I get a nice spike in the center. So when I, I actually paused the video instead of stopping taking data. So, but here's our data. Unfortunately, the way that we manipulate this is the same as with the Chromebooks. But it, it's a little bit more sensitive, which is kind of nice. But um, it's still kind of annoying. So you can see that there's some interesting noise here from the um, the collision that it had. And so it looks like the collision kind of lasts till about right here. So it's, it looks like here it hit and then it bounced up into the air and then it came back down and hit. And then at this point it's kind of back to equilibrium. Okay, so for this one to calculate the impulse, we're going to want to go, we choose this let's see where to go this right here to select the region that we want to use and we can adjust the size of this region so we want it to start it at the beginning here okay maybe slide it over just a tad so it starts right at the beginning and I'm actually going to choose all the way over to here till after it's done bouncing <clears throat> so if you think about a bounce where it's making it go up then coming back down the net change in momentum from the bounce should be zero so it's okay if we have all that extra selected and then we'll click here to find area and so we get an area of 0.13 newton seconds other information that you can find here is this first of all if you can take this region of time so the however much time has passed between 8.25 and 8.88 8 seconds maybe you can divide that by the divide the area by that time that's passed to find the average force. For that, you might want to lower the region. So we get about the same here. So I guess we'll just focus on the main peak. Um, hmm. No, I guess we do need after that after the bounce. The trick here is that we're unable if it bounces between the force causing it to stop and the force causing it to bounce back into the air. And so that's why I have to kind of select over here. So the average force calculation is going to be tricky, but you could divide that by the region of time, at least get an idea. But we can also get, um, using this tool right here, we can say add coordinate, and you can drag it and use it to figure out what the maximum force was. So in this particular example, my maximum force was 138 newtons. Um, <clears throat> And so you can kind of get that value, and then you also get that area. Like I said, you can use that to figure out how fast it was going, potentially how high it was dropped from, and things like that.
okay? Um, and once you've done this, you can actually, once you get the data itself, you can disconnect and let the next group go and take this back to your table to analyze it, okay? Um, and yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Also, um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions.